As many of you know who follow me, I'm a professional certified coach, ALCT trained, accredited with the International Coach Federation. I've spent 10 plus years in training as well as I've got 10,000 hours of coach training with executives, CEOs, Fortune 500 leaders, and everyday people. One of the major issues that often comes up in the coaching world, based on where we are today in today's culture, is managing and mastering transition. And oftentimes, we don't see change coming. And change is the preview of coming attractions because change leads to transition. Change happens in a moment, but then transition is the process that's the result of moving from a change to a new thing. And whenever change happens, a lot of times we get stuck in between where we were and where we want to be. And we feel like we're locked in and we're spinning our wheels going nowhere fast. So I want to give you four coaching keys to mastering transition that will enable you to look at where you are right now, especially if you're in a season of transition where a change happened and a chapter in your life abruptly or unexpectedly or naturally came to an end and you have yet to come into that new chapter where new things are beginning to emerge and you feel like you're in that in-between place where you're in limbo. First and foremost, number one, in order to master transition, you have to accept that a change occurred and something ended. And what ended has to be let go of. A lot of people are looking for closure because so much change is taking place that they're trying to fix their past in order to get into their future. In the coaching world, we take a shift from trying to fix the past to anticipate the future so that when you anticipate the future and begin to move forward, the past will take care of itself. That sounds really wise to me and sounds like the words of a great and wise man named Paul, uh, who was formerly Saul of Tarsus, who says, this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I reach forward to what lies ahead. And I think that you and I need to realize that when a change comes that we didn't see coming, but God did, who surrounds us with favor as with a shield, then when that change comes and a door that was once open in our life closes, yes, you're going to grieve. Just remember that grief is always a doorway to new opportunity. Don't deny the grief. Just let go of the fact that a chapter has ended. Now, that's easier said than done, but it is step one. You've got to let go of what no longer is available. Secondly, once you let go, you're now moving through a process because you're now getting unstuck. Because between where you were and where you're going, you want to navigate that zone that we call the limbo zone, what William Bridges, the great transition master in the corporate world, calls that zone of limbo, the nowhere zone. You want to progressively move through that so that you can accelerate getting to the next chapter without getting stuck somewhere internalizing all sorts of stuff and finding reasons to blame yourself or analyze or, 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 or uh, become so introspective that you stop moving forward. So let it go, first step. Second two, step two, once you let go, you got to hold on. Well, what do you hold on to? Okay, what are the things that were working for you that still work? Even though a chapter has closed, what are the things that are of value that have always been in your life, that have always consistently, in every season, cycle, and pattern you've been through, always worked for you? When you can identify those and take a real strategic life inventory, hold on to those things. I'm not convinced if it ain't broke, break it is the best or wisest counsel as a coach. I don't necessarily even see that in holy writ. Although I know it may work as a great best-selling title in, in the business world, in the world of people helping, if it isn't broke, it means it's working. And if it's working, work with it. So if a chapter ends that you have to let go of, it doesn't mean you end. If something comes to an end, you're still you. 
And you need to understand that what's worked for you that's been effective, the strategies, the skills, the resources that no matter what you've been through have always helped you bounce back. Hold on to those. So you let go, you hold on, and then you begin to anticipate what wants to happen and you start dreaming again. And as you start dreaming again, you get out into the future and come back into the present and you anticipate what new skill sets, how do I need to upgrade and refine my skill sets in order for me to move forward. And what you do then is you take on those new skill sets in that in-between place so that you can continue to progress. I let go, I hold on, I take on that which wants to happen in my life. I begin to see myself in a new light based on a new promise, based on a new sense of the future. And then from letting go to holding on to taking on, I now have the power to move on. And I keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high call in my life. So very simply, to master transition in the nowhere zone between a former chapter that has come to an end and a new chapter that hasn't started yet. I need to let go of that which is over and realize that an ending is a beginning. I need to hold on to what has been enduring in my life that has always worked, that's part of my gifting, part of the graces in my life, part of the resourcefulness that's been built into me that is God-given. Let go hold on, take on what is yet to be added in grace to my life in terms of skill sets, upgrading and refining my skill sets, and then move on into a brand new future, realizing that when all of that begins to come together, a wide and effectual door will be made available because you'll now be ready to walk through it. It was the great late Robert Greenleaf who said, we get what we are open for, we get what we are ready to receive. Doors open when you are ready to walk through them. Let go, hold on, take on, move on.